Hello everyone, welcome to Vert Mode. I'm excited to give you a sneak peek at our new course, Mastering Human Anatomy for 3D Artists. In this course, we dive deep into the captivating world of human anatomy, exploring techniques used by master artists throughout history to create anatomically accurate models. If you want to follow along with this demonstration, sign up for our emailing list to receive access to the image planes I'm using right now. And if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, enroll in the full course on Udemy. Links to our emailing list and Udemy page can be found in the video description. Let's get started. We are now on the final stretch for this base mesh and we're gonna be done with Maya soon. What we need to do is we need to add in the ear. So we're gonna add the ear along the side of the head using a series of extrusions. Uh, we don't wanna detail the ear in here. We're gonna detail that inside of ZBrush. It's just a lot easier. You can detail ears inside of Maya and I've done it for various things like game characters. It does take a bit of time. Uh, and generally I do that off the of sculpt, but hey, we'll explore how that process works. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to want to spread out the geometry along where the ear is located. And essentially that's going to be the top edge here coming under the midsection of the eye to just above the jaw. So here's the jaw here. We're getting a one above it. It's gonna be this stretch here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna to wanna to spread these out a bit. So coming to the side here, let's find the ones we want to adjust. Uh, just kind of looking at where the head falls. This is the right area. Uh, I think these are potentially the ones we want to do or one step back. I think select these, these ones here. Okay, so these are gonna be the ones that are going to uh, affect the ear, essentially. Uh, so we're gonna have eight in total and we want to just spread these out so that we have access to the ear a little bit better. So I'm going to come to this edge here and just do a mesh tool slide edge to slide this down and slide this one down to get to the base here. And then we'll slide this one up a little bit. And that should be good enough to get this structure here. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to extrude and do an offset to give us structural topology that we like. And we're going to start to shape this to the ear, okay? So we're gonna go into vertex mode. Uh, I can come into here and move these. I'll go ahead and use this center one to kind of give me the middle line of the ear as close as possible. And it is the ear is not the symmetrical shape. So that pretty much does the trick there. I'm going to come in and use this bottom one to help form the ear lobe. Do the same thing back here and just come along here and shape these. Uh, to the best of my abilities. And we are going to address the backside vertices shortly here, but let's go ahead and get these ones as closely placed as possible to the ear shape, just to have something approximate. So something like that uh, gives us our ear shape bit. And if we come to the side view here, uh, one of the things I like to do is just flatten these. So we're just gonna flatten those down, and then we can rotate them a little bit here to have the angle of the ear better uh, from the front and move them out slightly so they're not sinking into the head a whole lot. Uh, but we do want to try and simulate the angle of the ear a little bit better, and that should be pretty close. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is once we have these is we're gonna extrude these out. So we'll just click extrude, and pull this out and we're going to look at how these look compared to the front view and you'll see pretty close to the volume we're looking for. After that we can extrude them again. Uh, this time we're going to extrude to the inner lip so I'm going to click extrude and we're going to use an offset to kind of extrude that interior and that is essentially going to give us the ear that we need. From here, we can just take a little bit more time shaping it. Uh, so one thing I'll do is with that interface, I will move this inward a bit. So I'll just use the move tool to move that in. And then with these front vertices, we can start to kind of pull these down to slope into the ear form a bit better and maybe back as well. And we can work our way around this for that in general. Now, like I mentioned, we are just going to sculpt this. So at the end of the day, we are going to sculpt that. Uh, we can go ahead and move some of these back here so they don't pop off the head as much. 
we will sculpt the back side of the ear, so don't worry about that. Uh, like I mentioned, we want to have a base mesh that allows us to be versatile and change the form. Uh, we don't need a base mesh that is the character. So that will give us the structure of the ear placed approximately where we're going to need it, and with topology we can use to sculpt it. Now, with that in place, uh, I'm going to revisit some of these necklines here and just make this look a little bit nicer uh, by spacing some of these out. So I'm going to use the mesh tool slide edge here to just give this one a little bit more breathing room. I'm going to come to the back of the head here and have this come down more into here and uh, just continue tweaking this. But at this stage, we have our base mesh done that we are going to be using inside of Maya. Uh, like I mentioned, it's by no means a masterpiece. Uh, if you want to do a super detailed model in Maya, go back to the early 2000s when it is actually needed, <laughs> and there you go. Uh, really, we use sculpting applications, uh, I'd say 99% of the time across all industries to create characters. There's an exception in mobile where uh, lower end companies tend not to use sculpting applications to save on money, just because it might be excessive. But also we'd already be past the polygon budget for like a character uh, for a mobile game. So, hey, guess what? You'd have to be even more creative than this. Uh, but once you're at this stage, uh, take your time spacing out the vertices. Remember the base thing that we're looking for is to keep them relatively evenly spaced uh, quads across the model. So you're gonna see me working these back areas here. Is it gonna be perfect everywhere? No. Uh, obviously an area like the backside of the neck here, unfortunately we're gonna end up with a whole bunch uh, that are just clustered together because if we don't, uh, we're gonna end up compromising the form of the model. Like there, you can see, well, the moment I do that, it's like, uh, where's the jaw going? I can still adjust these back here so that they go back here a little bit more evenly and uh, kind of work them down the neck. And just remember, as you do this, uh, look over all the forms. Don't just get super narrow focused on one area. Uh, look it over in three dimensions. So you'll see right now I'm kind of doing a lot of stuff in perspective. Uh, eventually, I am going to shift gears and switch to doing this in um, the side view. But to begin with, uh, I'm going to start here. Notice I'm also doing a very liberal use of the slide edge for this. Uh, the slide edge is just one of those tools that I like to use uh, kind of as a, a, a stencil. It's like a safety net, if you will, that allows me to prevent myself from doing something silly and ruining the forms I have in place. Uh, so it just works out nicely. Especially in an area like the back side of the head here, we have most of the roundness and moving these by hand would really cause issues. Uh, but the slide edge is kind of just a safe way for me to come in here and get these to be a bit more evenly spaced. I'm going to move this one back a little bit more to be the side of the head. And uh, yeah, just take your time with it, okay? All right, so let's just check the uh, backside here, and I think I'm going to call it good soon. Nothing really is popping out as crazy here, and like I mentioned, I don't mind giving myself a little bit more sculpting work, because I know I can sculpt it faster than I can push and pull polygons, and that's something you just have to kind of uh, learn as you go, your preferences. You know, if you're better with polygons, uh, by all means, spend more time here, less time in ZBrush. And it does kind of depend on the project. Uh, but with this being an anatomy study, uh, we know that vast majority of it is going to be ZBrush stuff. But you can only go so far in Maya. Uh, you could theoretically model in muscles on top of a skeleton, but uh, <laughs> at the end of that, at best, you would have something that you could use for a rig. And at worst, uh, something that you can send to a medical school for them to use as reference. Um, not a character. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that done for what I am aiming for. Maybe just even some of these out a little bit better. But that is going to be the base mesh. So now you'll see that looks a little bit more human with ears. Uh, still pretty far from perfect in terms of a human, but 
close enough. And that's really what we need. It has the proportions, it has the base form structures. Uh, I think we can call that good. It is tempting to add one more neckline, but I feel like uh, the neckline we have is fine in terms of form. And if we add more, it's actually just gonna cause density issues. Uh, the neck doesn't have a terribly large amount of detail. It has some important muscles running along it, but we should be able to express those okay with the topology we have. Uh, but there we go. I think that will do the trick and get us set up and ready to go. All right. Awesome. So at this stage, uh, you might want to do a mesh display soft and edge on this if you're not liking the hard edges. That will help this read a little bit better. But there he is in all his polygonal glory, our man. All right. So that will be the final stretch here. Make sure you save out a new iteration, save as, and set this to 23. And that is going to conclude our form study and our base mesh creation. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how the human form looks, how the human form feels three-dimensionally in terms of polygons uh, expressed inside of Maya. Uh, we do have a long ways to go in terms of sculpting this character and getting the anatomy study going. And that's going to be what we dive into next. And we'll be using this as our launch point in ZBrush. So you want to have this done before we jump into ZBrush. There are a few more things we're going to do to prep to go into ZBrush. And we're going to tackle that beforehand. We're also going to talk about how to export this for ZBrush. So we're not done quite yet, but that is going to conclude building our base mesh. Okay. So as a challenge, what I want you to do is go ahead and finish up your base mesh, add in those ears, finish adjusting the final vertices and get that form all in place so you're ready to move forward with the course. So this is me from the future. Uh, a few recordings into sculpting, I realized I had an issue with the foot here where from the front view, our foot seems to be sloping down at an angle and these toes get lower and lower and lower when they all should be level to the ground. So when you're doing your final pass of your model, make sure you look it over and look for any small details like this that need to be corrected. Uh, hopefully you won't find many, but uh, I'm not sure when this happened or how it happened, but all those are kind of angling down into the ground and they shouldn't be. So what I could do is I could come in here one by one and kind of lift them. Uh, I'll start with this one here because it looks like the first two are relatively level. And I could actually bring those down even. Let me take this front one here. And I'm just going to do a select and grow on this one to get to that second point here. And uh, I can just use the move tool to move it down. Now for this, we can turn on object X if we don't have it. But you want to have this base of the toe here coming in line with the ground because the tips of the toes touch the ground. I'll do the same with this one. I'll just do a select and grow, and we'll just grow this back. And this one we may want to grow back a little bit further, depending on how it goes, but I think that's okay. We can pull this one down so it touches. Come to this next one here, and I'm going to want to select and grow this, and I can hit G to do this, but I'm actually going to take this one all the way down to the base and lift this one until we're seeing that area touch the ground. And then I'll do the same with this next one here. Just G, 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 all the way back. Lift that till we see that area touching the ground and do the same with this one here. And lift that till it's touching the ground. So this is gonna give us a nice even setup with the toes. From here, we can go ahead and adjust this back area to have the slope we're looking for. But we do wanna make sure that those are relatively flat and they don't have some strange looking arc to them like what I was having in my uh, <laughs> ZBrush file. Uh, when you guys get to the ZBrush file, you might actually notice that now that I pointed this out in the setup. Uh, so in the setup files, you'll see what those feet look like. Uh, not too pleasant. Now with this line here, I'm going to grab this and flatten this and bring this to be on the ground as well. That way we're getting a correct location for the ball of the foot. Uh, I'll just hold X to get that in there. And there we go. That should give us a better look to this and give us the results we're looking for for that foot area. So let me just double check it from the front. I feel like we're still going to need to make some adjustments when we get into the sculpting side of things, but that's going to be a better result than what we were getting. So make sure you double check your whole model. You know, if there's any areas that are sort of problematic, any areas you feel like could be a little bit nicer, for example, in the gluteus area, 
Uh, instead of having this sink in so much, it might be nice to pull this out a bit. So that way we're not getting quite as much of an indentation and uh, maybe even spreading some of these uh, to have more of a gluteus like look. We could use some of these to define how the gluteus area is sloping a bit better. And uh, in doing so, you might be able to come in here and be like, oh, well, look at that. By moving those up, we can start to move these down and we can create more of an arc to this area uh, that'll be beneficial long term. All right. So just be mindful of that. Uh, we could do the same in the front, too. We could start to pull some of these up to define the groin better. So that way we're getting just a little bit easier result when we get to ZBrush. OK, so before you move forward, definitely come in and check your model and just be aware that maybe even once we transition over to ZBrush, you might have to revisit this to make some changes because uh, I did. Uh, I did have to come in here and edit some of this so it would look a little bit nicer in ZBrush. And so we wouldn't have to try and fix those toes in ZBrush because fixing the alignment of those in ZBrush would not be fun. <laughs> All right. So give your model a look over, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, once you're satisfied, save it and then move forward with the rest of the course. For the next part of this lecture series, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can catch it when it goes live. We're going to give you guys the full modeling section out of the course as a preview. And just as a reminder, if you would like to follow along, sign up for our emailing list below to get the image planes I'm using in this demo. And if you want to take the full course, check us out on Udemy. I'll see you in the next video.